side, this is Adagio in G minor by Albinoni. Or is it? Actually, it's not. Everybody thinks it's by Albinoni, but it was written by a guy called Giazzotto. He was the biographer of Albinoni. And that's, there's a lot of irony there, given that the only reason anybody knows Albinoni's name is because of this piece. And he didn't even write it. And presumably, Giazzotto was a fan of Albinoni. He was his biographer. And uh, he was the one who wrote it. That's kind of funny. Anyway, we're going to be looking at the notes here, the counting, of course, and the fingering of all of these notes. Make sure you stick around for all of that. You, know, you have all the puzzle pieces in place, and then you can play it yourself. I'm going to play about 30 seconds of music, and then we'll get started. Here we go. We're going to cover as much as we can, maybe the first eight bars, eight to 12 bars here. Make sure you use the slow-mo button, all right? Slow this down if I'm going too fast. Let's just jump right into it. We're going to do the left hand, the whole thing, because there's just bouncing octaves. Let's learn those first. The first bar is G's. That's it. These are all quarter notes, nothing fancy. Next bar, it's all F's. F here, F here, and then back. Next bar is E flats. Next is D's. Then C's. C sharps. I should say about C sharps, I usually go on the black notes here when I have a fourth finger because it's easier to play. It's harder to miss the note. So if I'm playing black notes, I tend to use the fourth finger. Moving on, we get D's, and then G to finish. So on its own, it's very straightforward. When you play with both hands, you're going to have to keep your eye on the left hand so that you can control and um, you know, manage the jumps so you don't miss any of them. All right, so those are done. Let's move on to the right hand. We're starting with one, two, and five. Those are the first two bars. Second bar. Very easy. Moving on, we get... So that's one, two, three. The top note moves to four and then five. But the bottom two notes stay put. Like that. And then another G. Bottom two notes are still down. And then another G. All the while, you're still holding those one and two down. Just learn the notes here as I just played it. Forget about the rhythm. We'll do that in a moment. Moving on to the next section. So that's one, two, three. Bottom two notes stay put. The third moves to four and then to five. Like that. Next bar. So that's one, two, and four. Bottom two stay put. The fourth moves to three and back to four. Like that. Moving on. This is a little trickier. So it's going to be five and one, four, five. Thumb is being held. Lift the thumb now. One and three, quiet. And then we have 
four, three, four, and one. You'll notice that this chord is not, uh, this is not melodic. It's just harmonic, so it should be quieter than the melody. Like that. See? Now let's have a look at the rhythm a little bit more carefully. We have these little quick notes. The thing to know is that you have to go through all three of these notes before the end of one. So. If, our, if we're counting like this, one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and, see? So that means that you have to finish this note before the and comes in. One and two. It doesn't really matter how fast you play it. It's a little bit kind of, there's a, a wee bit of stretchiness in the rhythm. So as long as you get those three notes done before the end of one, it should sound basically correct. One and two and three and one and two and three. And moving on. Same idea. One and two and three. And so those three notes came in before the end of one. Same idea here. One and two and three. And moving on. One and, same idea. Two and. Now we have something a little different. And that's a triplet, which means that these three events have to fit inside of one beat. So I cannot say ands anymore, because if I say three and, I'm basically breaking up the beat into two halves, the one and the and, or rather the three and the and. But since there's three, uh, it's broken up into three because it's a triplet, I have to think of it as a triplet. Triplet one. Right, so this is where the exercise at the end of the video might come in handy. How to treat triplets. So when I'm counting this out loud, I no longer say an and after a number. I just stop talking and fit three notes into that beat. One and two and three. One and two and three. And then, then the main theme comes in. This we're going to cover in the next tutorial, which is on the website. So go have a look over there. Uh, I also This is my arrangement. So go have a look for the arrangement and for the rest of the tutorial on there. It's free, so do it. And of course, feel free to subscribe if you feel I've earned it. And see you around.